everyone, I'm Leona Poon from ISWOG. May is preeclampsia month and I have the opportunity to invite Professor Nicolaides to join our chat room and he will share with us uh, some of his uh, insights into preeclampsia research and answer some of your questions. So let's, let's get started and the first question is, why can preeclampsia be so serious? So preeclampsia complicates about five in a hundred pregnancies and yet it's one of the major causes of death and handicap, short-term and long-term uh, adverse events, both for the mother and for the child. On a worldwide basis, we have about 46,000 maternal deaths every year, and more than half a million fetuses and babies die as a result of preeclampsia. So for the second question, um, can you tell us who is at risk of developing preeclampsia? Unfortunately, all women are at risk of developing preeclampsia, but there are certain groups of women that have a particularly high risk. And those are uh, defined by various maternal demographic characteristics, uh, plus uh, previous obstetric and medical history. The maternal characteristics are increasing maternal age and uh, weight. Race has an important contribution, we know that certainly from studies that we carried out in England, uh, women that are black and South Asian have a considerably higher risk of developing preeclampsia than uh, women that are white. The contribution of uh, genetic versus environmental factors remains part of the debate, but until we resolve that issue, the truth is that certain races have a higher risk than others. And then we go to the particulars of the pregnancy. How did you conceive? If you had in vitro fertilization, your risk is uh, higher. If we then go to previous obstetric and medical history, people that start off their pregnancy with diabetes, chronic hypertension, autoimmune diseases, and in relation to previous pregnancies, uh, women that had previous pregnancies complicated by preeclampsia, are also at increased risk. So there's a series of uh, maternal factors that identify a subgroup of women that are at higher risk than others. But do you advocate for a screening based on maternal factors or we, we should do something else? In the 70s, when you had screening for Downs based on maternal age, the detection rate was about 30%. And in the subsequent decades, the detection rate went to beyond 90% when we combined uh, information from the maternal history together with biochemical and biophysical uh, markers. And the same, exactly the same is true for uh, screening for preeclampsia. With these maternal risk factors, the overall detection rate of preeclampsia, the proportion of preeclampsia that are predictable is only about 30 to 40 percent. And yet, we have carried out extensive studies um, in which we showed that uh, the measurement of blood pressure, the measurement of uterine artery pulsatility index, together with biochemical markers like uh, placental growth factor, when you combine this information, then we are now reaching detection rates in excess of 90 percent. So, yes, if you have nothing else, um, maternal risk factors are tolerable, recognizing that their performance in identifying the high-risk group is quite poor. Ideally, and now after 20 years of extensive research and extensive evidence, I think we should be moving towards a combined process, history, maternal factors together with biomarkers. Mm -hmm.